Now we bow our heads in order of prayer. Father, again we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want us to turn to St. Matthew's Gospel, the 19th chapter, and beginning with the 16th verse. Here's the story, the account of the rich young ruler. And I have preached on this before, but I trust you'll see something new in it tonight. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, beginning with verse 16. And behold, one came unto him, one came and said unto him, Good Master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into the life, keep the commandments. He says unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man says unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what like I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of an eagle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye have, which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall come, shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one of the forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit eternal life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last first. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. I think there's several things we probably ought to get straight before I begin, and that is, what the Bible is not telling us, the Bible is not telling us that you need to get rid of all your wealth. It's not telling us that. Uh, it's not telling us that uh, poverty will get you to heaven or that riches will keep you out. Uh, we have in the story in the Word of God that in hell, the rich man and Lazarus, there was one rich man in heaven and one in hell, so the riches had nothing to do with it. So, as we look at this, about the, this rich young ruler, I want us to look what his trouble was. He came and said, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? The Greek says, what good thing shall I do that I may acquire? The Amplified Version says that I may possess. That is, he wanted salvation as a possession. Now, I'm certain that God is not against possessing or acquiring things. No doubt this young man had acquired many things in his lifetime from caravans or places he'd traveled. We've done the same thing, probably everybody here. There are things that you've acquired. And God's not against that. There's nothing wrong with acquiring. We all do it. And Jesus is not against it. But this young man wanted eternal life as another possession. Now, God is a God of art and beauty, and uh, I see that in the way he created, even the way he created West Virginia, the beauty of the mountains and all. He is a God that loves beauty, and he doesn't mind if we do. If I had a lot of money, I wouldn't mind having some art treasures to hang in my home. I saw on TV this uh, thing of art collection the other day. It was a beautiful picture. I would have loved to have had it, but it would cost... <laughs> several thousand dollars to get it and uh but god's not uh, he's not against that if i had the money i could buy it and enjoy it and god wouldn't wouldn't mind isn't that wonderful 
So I'm glad he's that kind of a God. Now, there is nothing wrong, as I said, with acquiring something. The only thing is that he wanted eternal life as a possession. And God is a God instead of art and beauty and that, and he, he, he loves these things. He doesn't mind if we have some. So God is a God of beauty, created the earth in beauty, its mountains and valleys. Now you can acquire on earth, but he didn't understand that you can't acquire spiritually. I trust we get the truth of this. You cannot possess anything spiritually. The most spiritual person in this church may not be the person you think because the, that person who is the most spiritual doesn't have anything spiritually. They're bankrupt. They don't have anything. That's why E. Stanley Jones used to say, and it used to shock me when he first heard him say it, he said, I'm spiritually bankrupt. I thought, oh dear me, that man can't be bankrupt. Where am I? But you cannot acquire anything spiritually. Everything in the spiritual realm is a gift from God. Jesus gave the rich young ruler quite a list of things to do or to get rid of. Now, now like I mentioned there, get, uh, he gave him the list of them, none of which would have given eternal life. If he would have given away all his possessions, that wouldn't have given him eternal life. If you, if you gave everything you had to the poor, that wouldn't give you eternal life. No man ever got eternal life from giving away his possessions. Well, Bob Paul said the same thing in the first, thirteenth chapter of, uh, first Corinthians. Though I give, uh, uh, all my goods to feed the poor and have not love, it profits me nothing. Or if have not Christ, Christ is the center. If I don't have him there as the center, I can give all my goods away, it won't profit me a bit. So, uh, Jesus gave the rich young ruler this list to give, none of which would have given him eternal life. He had given all of his money away. Had he given all of his money away, that wouldn't have given him eternal life. For example, Zacchaeus gave half of his goods. Well, that was good enough for Jesus. He didn't mind. It's, that's all right. You, this day of salvation come with half of it. But he didn't tell the young rich young ruler. He said all of it because of his attitude. So, Jesus said, after you have given it away, then come and follow me. As he said in another place, if a man will follow, come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That's where it is. It's not in giving up possession. Giving up possession never got anybody to heaven. Deny self and follow Jesus will give you eternal life. I copied something down from Meister Eckert, this great saint that lived, I've forgotten this century, 17th century or 14th century, I'm not sure which. He said, let everyone begin denying self, and in doing so, he will have denied all else. Now listen to this, what he says. If a man gave up a kingdom, or even a whole world, and was still selfish, he would have given up nothing. Well, I hope you hear that. Let me say it again. If a man gave up a kingdom or even a whole world and was still selfish, he would have given up nothing. He said, if the rich young ruler had given all of his possessions and did not deny self, he would have given up nothing. But if, however, he had denied self, then whatever he keeps as uh, whether it be wealth or honor or anything else, he is free from it all. Look at Peter. Peter asked a question. We have forsaken everything, and what shall we get? He had forsaken his fishing business. He had forsaken nets. And Meister Eckert said, asked the question, what had Peter really forsaken? His business or his nets? But he said, what had he taken? He, my circus said, he hadn't really forsaken anything. I want you to get a hold of this. For a little bit later on, the disciples were arguing among themselves as to which one would be the greatest in the kingdom of God. 
That's what counted. And none of them had done that. He gave up his business, his fishing business, but he had really given up nothing as long as he still held to himself. So the disciples hadn't started yet. They really hadn't started on self-denial. And you can't get into the kingdom of God by giving up a fishing net. They didn't learn anything about the kingdom of God until they began to deny self, take up their cross, and follow Jesus. Then they began to know something about the kingdom of God. So until you have denied self, you haven't denied anything. Oh, I don't know. I, uh, I hope you get a hold of that. We want revival, and I want to tell you, here's the secret of it, here's the core of it. If we don't get this, we'll never have revival. You can give up things, do things, everything else, but if you don't deny self, then you have denied nothing. Meister Eckert said, Jesus said to anyone who had forsaken anything for me, uh, uh, however, whether brethren, sisters, father, mother, a uh, hundred, I said, uh, sisters, all of this, if you've given up all of these, he's hundredfold in this life and eternal life. But if you've forsaken anything with an eye on the hundredfold, you haven't forsaken anything. If you get a hundredfold and that's your idea, then you've forsaken for the hundredfold. You haven't forsaken for Jesus. You have forsake for Jesus only when you don't have an eye on anything. It doesn't make any difference whether you get anything. But if you have forsaken, then you'll get the hundredfold. Jesus is worth forsaking everything. If I never got another thing for it. The rich young ruler wanted to acquire self, well, wanted to acquire uh, eternal life. But you don't acquire anything in the kingdom of God. That's why the most spiritual person in this church doesn't have anything. Spiritually, they don't have anything. They've only got that they're receiving from Jesus day by day. They don't have a thing stored up. He gave us that in the manor, gathering the manor in the wilderness. If they kept anything, it's spoiled on their hands. And you try to keep anything spiritually, it'll spoil tomorrow. That's why no man is spiritual and just say, well, he's a spiritual man. He's only spiritual because he's receiving something now from the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the only spirituality he has. If I said, E. Stanley Jones said, I'm spiritually bankrupt, I never could understand that. And the Word of God says, blessed are the poor in spirit. So we keep from receiving from him spiritually. That is why we can't store up anything spiritually. If we have received from Jesus daily, we must receive from him daily. I think of the most pitiful church in the Word of God that I know is the book of Revelation, the Laodicean church. It was a church that Jesus said was lukewarm. And he was going to spew them. I want you to get old. He was going to spew them out of his mouth because they said, I have need of nothing. Those are the ones he speared, uh, spew out of the mouth. The people say, I don't need anything. I'm spiritual enough. God will spew you out of his mouth. I have need of nothing. God said, you know not that you're rich and wretched, poor, miserable, naked, and blind. Buy of me gold tried in the fire. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. The more we know we have need, the more we can receive. The man who gets the most from God is the man who knows he's most needy and is receiving the most from God. He's the man who gets the most. If we don't have our ears tuned to what the Holy Spirit says, we'll miss it. And I'm amazed how we can miss the truth. I remember years ago when I was preaching in a little church in Michigan, just starting out preaching. There were two sisters in that church. One would sit and they, they wouldn't have anything to do with each other. One would sit on one side of the church and the other would sit on the other side. When they came in, wherever side the one was sitting on, the other would sit on the other side. And I was in a camp meeting one time up there when one of the sisters was there and the preacher preached on the love of God. It was a powerful sermon. And I saw this sister sitting there and I wondered what in the world will she do with this sermon. 
So I went to her afterwards. I saw her. I said, Sister, what did you think of that sermon? She said, oh, that was a wonderful sermon. I wish Sister so-and-so had been here. She needed it. But that's the way we are. We don't see it for ourselves. We see it for somebody else, and as a result, we miss it. So I'm trusting that God will help us, that we can learn the secret of denying self to gain the things from the kingdom of God, and to do it continually, we don't acquire anything or build up anything, but we need constantly to receive from the Lord Jesus Christ.